Hi, everybody. Christian and I welcome you back to Mondays with Mindy. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today's episode features a conversation with one of my lifelong friends. We've actually known each other. We counted it out 36 years. Wow. Uh, whose daily, yeah, whose daily FaceTimes over the last five months at stay at home have only solidified our everlasting and necessary friendship. We have epic be- belly laughs so often that I decided to include that as part of my weekly ab workout. <laughs> it happens to be the only ab workout I've been doing. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm obviously talk well, maybe not obviously to you guys, but I'm talking about the wonderfully delicious and hilarious actress and producer Tara Carcian. Tara is the daughter of the legendary actress Pat Carroll and Lee Carcian and sister of casting director Carrie Carcian. She attended Beverly Hills High and was a founding member of the Echo Theater Company. She began her career appearing in episodes of Married with Children and Who's the Boss, Designing Women in the X-Files, and in the 2000s, guest starred on NYPD Blue, CSI, and Prison Break, as well as a recurring role in ER and also in Life's Work, uh, another sitcom. In 2014, she co-wrote and co-starred with Andrea Grano, her best friend, uh, one of her current producing partners also, in the independent film, BFFs, which also featured her mother, Pat. The following year, she reoccurred in the ABC drama series, Blood and Oil. Her production company, Girl Crush Films, is a collective of five female artists committed to producing quality and compelling content that's not only more from the female perspective, but created and brought to fruition by primarily female teams, with each production having at least a 70-30 split above and below the line. Wow, congrats for that. We're in power. Yeah. Her most recent acting credits uh, include the role of Chef Birdie in FX's American Horror Story 1984. And post-pandemic, she is going to be joining the cast of a show that I am not allowed to mention. <laughs> but I'm sure you're going to know it when you see it because it's it's a biggie. <laughs> so I'm thrilled about that for her. Tara lives in Los Angeles with her one-eyed bulldog, Wink. Oh, I love that name. <laughs> Yes, well, and he's fabulous. Also, obviously, I get to see and talk to him every day over FaceTime as well over the last five months. So (laughs) anyway, Christian. Are you ready? We're ready. All right, let's bring her in. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to welcome to the show, Tara Carcian. Hello. Hi, kids. (laughs) You're welcome to applaud for yourself. It's it's a big deal. Yes. You know what? (laughs) Yeah. I'll God, start. I'm fabulous, aren't I? Yeah. 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 And That's why you're gonna on. know it in just a second. Um, hi, so, pretty um, people. Hi. Hi, gorgeousness. Uh, we start every uh, Mondays with Mindy with a little uh, five question poll. I'm a big fan of the show, I know. Oh, thank you. Why, thank you. Oh, see, season two perks. People <laughs> oh, always, wait, some people this, know wait, who we this, are. This is Monday with me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong show I was saying. <laughs> go on. All right. Just go with us. Uh, you're slotted. Okay. You're this time. Okay. Improv. Um, improv. Yeah. What's your favorite place to travel to and why? Really? You had to start with that one? Jesus. <laughs> well, just um, in the moment. In the moment. We won't go to anything. Yeah. Um, My favorite place to travel to is um, I love Carmel. Mm. Carmel is, and I know it's not very exotic. Um, Oh, oh, but it's, but it is my happy place. It's, it's seriously my happy place. It's, I think it's, it's magical up there. And I think it's just, I completely relax whenever I'm there. So that's rare. I've never heard you talk about it like that, that it, you relax there completely. Well, yeah. Well, we had a, uh, my family had a house there when I was growing up. And so it was always kind of a, a special place to go to uh, because it was familial and everything. And then uh, a friend of mine, her family has a house there. And I just, I, I, it's, there's something in the air there that makes yeah. me. It's it's really I a good agree. place for me. I, I'd like to retire there, actually. Hmm. Okay, well, That's just make place. sure there's room for me. Thank yeah, you. Do you get lost easily up there? Because they don't use like house numbers and street numbers, do they? Right? I, no, I, but I it's don't. a grid. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't. And I just, yeah. And, you know it. and I'm in the whole Monterey area and not yeah. just Carmel, mm-hmm. which I find charming and really disgustingly cute. But yeah. I think Monterey itself is just, it's, it's unbelievable. And yeah. agreed. I would agree. Agreed. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for agreeing with me. Uh, That's well, a good and one. I approve, even though you didn't ask. But, you know, because you asked. I never deal with you and you always <laughs> just throw it in. Go on. That's right. Uh, next question. <laughs> What assumption do people make about you that's wrong or that you feel uh, misunderstood by? It's such a great question because this happens all the time. People will say something to me and then they'll preface it with, I know you hate anything spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> what? You? As if I'm satanic or something. And <laughs> I happen to be, although I'm very private about my spirituality, I happen to be a very spiritual person. And I've always been, I always go, that person doesn't know me very well, hmm. if they have to say that. But so, Agreed. yeah. Hmm. I like nice. That and especially during these past few months, if in my humble opinion, you don't have anything to go to, you're in worse shape than most of us. That it's, would just be my offering. Could not be more true. Yeah. Okay. Um, who is uh, excluding me, of course, and now Christian? Uh, who's the most fascinating person you've met? Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. I, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, can we be a little professional here, people? Well um, done, too. You too. Well done. <laughs> the most fascinating person I've ever met. That is, I meet a lot of fascinating people. Yes, yeah. you do. That's, 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 um, so I, I'm, can I pass? Anyone no. stand out recently? Christian. Well, oh, we, um, we've not been anywhere recently. No, <laughs> I haven't Christian. really Got been it. any. Yeah. Uh, I just, I really enjoy, um, I love people. Well, this is going to be a screwed up thing to say. I love people outside of the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I find them fascinating. I, I, but I also like people in the industry. Just move on. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. As a kid, who was? Uh, can I ask you just because you you were surrounded by so much showbiz royalty? As a kid, who was the most fascinating person you met? I, maybe not most fascinating. Fascinating. Who's one that pops into your head? I don't. I mean, I don't know how close I was with her, but I remember being very. There was a market in Beverly Hills, Mindy, you might remember this, called Premier Market. Oh, my God. Of course I do. Okay. So we had a house account there. Of course God. you did. Those oh, my God. Days. So did we. Those <laughs> were really the days. Were, oh, my God. And I love a house account. Yeah. Really Ditto. Them anymore. Ditto. So at Premier Market, we would always, uh, my mother and I would go there, and there was, it happened a few times, but she would... She introduced me to this woman and she was the kindest woman and the sweetest woman. And I just, there was something magical about this woman and I was in awe of her. And it turned out that it was Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, <gasps> and that's right. Wow. She used to go there all, all the, the time. She lived around the corner. And my mother used to always say, Tara, go, go help Miss Fitzgerald with anything. And I would, uh, oh my God. But that woman, there was something about her aura. Look at me, the not spiritual person using the term aura. Uh, not horror, Mindy. It's not a bar mitzvah, okay? Jesus. I got, I got aura. I got it. <laughs> yeah, you do in spades, lady. Um, but she was this, there was a vibe about that woman that was just, there was something that was fascinating. Hmm. And wow. to be aware of it as a child, yeah, I think that speaks really. to, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Agreed. Ella Fitzgerald. That's a really wow. good one. Hi, that's major. I mean, Christian, that might be one of the best ones we've heard. I think it is the best we've heard. We've heard, okay. we've heard some good ones because we've okay. had some call we've out the same, but this exactly. is. Exactly. What, what do I win? Uh, one more time. With Mondays with Mindy, here yes. it comes. It's an instant prize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tara Carson, what's your guilty pleasure? Or one of them? Should you Not have more reality one? television? Mm. Which oh, is, I, yeah, I judge Mindy on her reality television. <laughs> um, 
And I feel safe enough to have her judge me. (laughs) Oh, and I do. Trust. Um, (laughs) My guilty pleasure is probably uh, old, not old, like 80s. Just let me say rom-coms. I'm a Mm. huge rom-com girl, which, again, people don't usually assume about me. Uh I I mean, there is still mystery. There is still mystery in our relationship. You gotta, you gotta I did keep not know guessing. that. No, you didn't, Mindy. That's <laughs> not something that I feel comfortable sharing with you. Well, wow. But well, I just did. You know, just put it out in the ethers. Bravo. Um, Bravo. Last question. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what's the best advice you've been given and who gave it? Um, best advice I've ever been given. There was, and this is only, this is only going to make sense to actors, I think, but no, I think it's true of of anything. There was a very successful casting director in the seventies. And when I told her, she was a friend of my parents. And when I told her I wanted to be an actress, she said, promise me something. And I said, yes. And she said, if you ever get desperate, you'll leave the industry. And Mm -hmm. She said, desperation walks in the room before you do. Ooh. And people can own it. And <gasps> yes. at one point when I was younger, I got desperate and I left the industry for two years. Wow. And I, yeah. And it was, uh, so her name was Sally Powers. She's no longer with us, but that was probably one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten. And I do think, yeah, I think that's true of any, it doesn't matter if it's acting. Definitely. Yeah. Well, and uh, my experience has been um, to piggyback on that is neediness or, or that sense of like, you know, I have to have this. It smells, there's like an Mm -hmm. odor to it. I think when you walk into a room, whether it be an audition or an interview or meeting somebody's parents for the first time, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Even like and social think, networking, you see it like, I mean, not the social network platforms, but when people are out and about in the past networking at like meetups and stuff to, you can tell oh, yeah. there's those, there's some people who just need it so badly. Everybody's sort of steering away from them kind of thing, you know? Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, because you, you, you go, oh, I don't want to be around this energy, mm-hmm. this, this person, this. So I, I love that piece of advice. And the other piece of advice that I think I, it's just, I don't know whoever said it to me, but don't take anything personally. Mm. And I do believe that yeah. we are, as humans, we tend to take on without thinking yeah. that it might not be about you. Right. You know, and to, I think that also mm. makes us more empathetic to people. If we can uh, not take things personally and go, we don't know what they're, you know, the, the, <laughs> The thing that drives me crazy is when someone says, everybody has a story. (laughs) Yes, we know everybody has a story. (laughs) And I always say that doesn't mean that they have to be an asshole. Right. (laughs) You know, we do all have uh, uh, stories. And I think that, but it does help when you can look at somebody and go, I don't know what their deal is. I don't know, you know, and I'm going to not take this person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in most cases, it is about me, Christian, but we don't know each other that well. So go on. Was that my five questions? We are done with that that portion of this can, conversation. Can you yes. tell me how I did? You did amazing. Do you feel warmed up? Wow. <laughs> Do you Quite feel literally. like you're in the deep dive? <laughs> yes, really. Wow. Um, so... I, you know, basically, and and now that you've listened and you also know, because I talk to you incessantly and ask uh, your counsel on the, this and everything else in my life, um, talking to creators of all different kinds, because basically for me, that's my, I, I, I suck everybody else's energy to fulfill my own creative energy. No, I just like meets like, I, I appreciate that. What yeah. are, and it's, I know this is a challenging question maybe in this time but what are what inspires you when you're working like where do you find your how do you talent. define your creative I'm a, I'm a talent your creative for. process like I love people's talent and it doesn't matter what they're doing mm-hmm. uh, be it writing which I'm in awe of I think anybody I think that's a gift directing um, 
there is something which is why I would like to transition more into producing because I am a talent whore. I love to watch people do what they do passionately and well. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people in this industry who um, squander talent and who are, you know what I'm saying? I, um, you know, yes. Not only do I know you're saying we've, you and I have both worked, worked, with, across, worked with many of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's and nothing it's, more. It's, it's energy sucking. And it's offensive to me because I go, you were given a God given talent. And an opportunity. Yes, and and I am a big one on uh, we uh, being allowed to do what we do. We need to be super grateful because there are look some jobs are <laughs> jobs, you know, yeah. and some as yeah. I like to say, sometimes the best part of getting the job is getting the job. <laughs> After that, yeah. it's like oh. You, but yeah. I, even in those situations, I know for myself, I'm very grateful. And because it's, it's hard to be an actor. It's hard to be, you know, Very it's, good. it's not an easy thing. And to be able to do it is a gift. And, but yeah, it goes across the board. To, I, I mean, I can sit on a set and watch people do their thing. And I'm talking about the grips and the, mm -hmm. that you go, you're, God, you're good. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And they're, they're, there's a joy to what they do. I hate yeah. being on a set and being around people who look like they would rather be getting, you know, root canal with no Novocaine. Right. Right. And that goes from the very top to the very bottom. And sure does. so, yeah. I like so that. When, you're, Go ahead. When, you're, when you're not working or when you're not on a set, is there any other things, people, places that inspire you or that make you feel like, um, that add anything to your process of any kind. I mean, for me, it's music um, that emotes, oh. uh, that brings a lot of emotion for me. So listening to music really helps me. Music is as, as I, uh, people who've worked with me know this. I mean, no matter what it is, I always pick um, a song or a playlist. You for do? Whatever I'm, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Music is super. In fact, if I had not been an actor, I would have wanted to be a music supervisor. Mm. Okay, I've never I've heard been, that before. That's I've fantastic. Been, Mindy. See, it's a lot of revelation wow. in this this little conversation. Uh, for me, Christian, I'd like yes. to say it's because of you. I'm, I think <laughs> well, I'm throwing out this stuff to kind of reel you in. Okay, that's our role. It's working. <laughs> wow. Um, what are you? Come on. What are What are you interested? In? Oh my gosh. What are your What are your obsessions right now? Getting right out, now, getting out of the pandemic. Um, <laughs> uh, politically, I'm I'm a little obsessed right now. Um, yes, right. Yeah, I, I think we. Yeah, there is. This is a, a. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, and I go. This is an incredibly important time for our not only our country but our world, mm -hmm. and. Um, I'm, I tend to be kind of like you, Mindy, I tend to be very optimistic and very, yes. and the last few years I've been very optimistic. I've been in kind of a um, free fall as far as, which is why I started doing my podcast. Yes, we're going to talk you know. about that. All right, stop yelling at me. I know, can't help it. She's very, emph and very emphatic when around. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm a little obsessed with politics, and yet at the same time, especially in this time of the pandemic, I have been uh, very aware that I have to be careful of not going overboard and listening mm. to too much, in the same way that I've kind of pulled back from any kind of social media, yeah. because I, I end up going, oh my God, I hate the human race, <laughs> and these are people that I'm friends with, you know, and I, so yeah. I... I've had to really pull back and um, that's been a good thing. So politics, I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, you and I have discussed this. They're, they're, I've been watching a lot more TV than I ever have in my life. Oh my, oh my gosh. I mean, uh, when I say there is nothing left to watch. We're well, really... that's you. I know I'm still, I've still got a lot left. She's only chipped away. I've only chipped. Um, yeah. 
but I've been amazed at some of the stuff that I've seen and just, yeah. there's so much talent out there. Agreed. There really is. And, and yeah. Yeah. Well, agreed. Yeah. And you and I have talked about this too, that my, during this time, I have refound through TCM these incredible movies. I've never been more proud to be an actor in all my life. And that's that's saying something during this time when it mm -hmm. has not been fruitful right. of, for me. And I'm going to sound like an old lady here. Oh, my God. Please do so. It drives me crazy. Well, I'm not going to say to people what you called the... the she adds the in front of things oh. like a 95-year-old. Anyway. Um <laughs> I, I am that to, that to Tara. I, she really does. Like Christian, you know why I am know. I telling you? You know how you know so how Todd to Almond. Me. You know how Todd Almond is going to be on the new episodes of Gossip Girl. So I call you know the new the reboot. I called it the Gossip Girl. She goes. He's oh. going to be on the Gossip Girl. I go. You mean Gossip Girl, <laughs> uh, Grandma? Uh, so <laughs> my obsession is the fact that young actors. Do not know, do not oh. are not studying TCM and have no basis in what has gone on before them. And when you say to somebody, you know, and I'm talking about, you can say Betty Davis, and they go, "Oh yeah, I've never seen a Betty Davis." And I'm like, "What? What?" <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it so, infuriates me. It, like same. it's not even mildly uncomfortable. I go yeah. from zero to fury. Yeah. <laughs> that fellow actors do not know their history. I mean, well, and I don't know what, what other profession what is like that, that. Did that training, that sort of informal training, because I studied film, I studied acting. I remember. I call it the Kardashian Uda Hagen, movement. Uda yeah. Is it that? Because it's like, it's more it's accessible the, it now than ever. And I'm like, why are we no, consuming it's, all it's, this? Because uh -huh. there's more people in this industry now seeking fame instead of to, yes. claiming themselves as an actor and a creative right. truly and I, i'm not poo-pooing reality right. as a as business acumen right the kardashians are through the roof i mean i you can't help but even if you don't like them i respect the doing. role yeah you have and their to. business acumen right yep. it's very impressive i Having tried to get that, them to adopt me i'm like <laughs> I mean, just, I, come on they would, right they would, i hate sorry. that go on i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it really, it, it is infuriating. I just had an experience a couple of years ago working with someone who is lovely and adorable, who knew none of my references. And believe me, they weren't from the 1950s. Yeah, right. Okay, they were from the 1990s. Yeah, and there esoteric. was still no sense of who these people were that won Oscars. You know, that, I mean. People who've never seen, when well, it's in the, the press right now, but Gone with the Wind. Uh, people yeah. who've never seen some of our great films that you go, yeah. You have to be able to, uh, I need to be able to say to you, it's kind of like blah, 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 or make the, po <laughs> I want the performance to be blah, blah, blah. And he, what? No and frame I of go, reference. None, yeah. none whatsoever. And it's terrifying to me. And I, I really, I would, besides that, I would like to also have an actor etiquette class. Mm, we've talked um, about that too. Yeah, we, yes. won't, we, we won't go on. Go on. Yeah. But yes. No, I, what's interesting is I remember when I was studying with Larry Moss, him saying that, you know, part of being a good actor is exposing yourself to the other arts, whether it be fine art, right. but also old movie, right? The craft yeah. of filmmaking. Right. And um, it's not, a, he would always say, it's not a waste of your time. You know, I have wasted many hours watching what we call binge TV, whatever have you. And there's been amazing stuff too, don't get right. me wrong, but there is nothing like sitting down and watching a movie with a, a classic yeah, that is so inspiring. And so, even yeah. if you go, okay, well, because I know a lot of younger people look at this and go, yeah, but there's, they're so over the top or they're so <laughs> without a doubt, it's a different, it's a different industry now. Yeah. yeah. You know, different reality technology. came in in the seventies. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But yeah. You have to be able to have a reference point to Agreed. these films, to these actors, to these, to, yes. to what came before you, you yeah. know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. you were talking about etiquette with actors. And I have to say the other thing that I have been increasingly behind the learning curve and I'm really, and, and really it's not even a learning curve. It's acceptance of where the industry is right now. But uh, just going into the rooms and the mutual respect casting directors had for actors that the, a lot of the agents and producers used to have for actors is so not there. I mean, it's so fascinating to me that um, 
we are so at the bottom of the totem pole in regard to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and etiquette being one of them or just the, just respect to be quite frank with you. And again, I think that lends itself to them being bombarded with this, you know, fame and numbers and reality stuff that has kind of muddied, um, some of the art, the filmmaking and television making process. Um, and, and not to be so down on it because um, we both uh, have worked and recently and will work mm-hmm. in the new recent future with really wonderfully talented people. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Tara, if you realize that today's episode of Mondays with Mindy is being sponsored by the Hollywood Caucus podcast by our one and only Tara Carcian. <laughs> oh, my God. So want to tell our... Exciting. Our listeners and our viewers a little bit about it. It is hosted by Tara and Jonathan Del Arco. The Hollywood Caucus is an informal and fun interview format that covers guest careers, personal lives, and political views, drilling down on the intersection between the entertainment industry and politics. We encourage you to jump online, go to any major podcast network, just like Mondays with Mindy, you will find it there. If you're having any trouble, go to mondayswithmindy.com. You'll find more information about Tara as well as the show notes. We'll have a link to her podcast there as well, so you can just click through and uh, have a listen. So thank you very much for joining us. And hopefully our guests will uh, take a listen to what you've got to say over there as well. (laughs) Are you moved? Are you moved? Are you surprised? You have no idea. I might have even uh, crapped myself a little bit from pure excitement. Um, By the way, thank you for sponsoring this. Uh, Yes, you're moving up in the world. Right, really, uh, yeah, jeez. I I don't even know what to do with myself. (laughs) I do love, though, that you and Jonathan sort of took this, um, you know, I mean, what we were talking about, your obsession or passion for politics and turned it actually into something very creative. How has it been for you, the experience? Well, I will tell you I know it's a lot of work. We've talked about that. Oh, Jesus. Um, You guys know. No, I think Johnny had actually called me up and and pitched this idea to me. And I said, hi, I'm not your gal. I'm not that well versed in politics. And he is so, you know, he was, what is that called? Surrogate for Obama. And now he's a surrogate for Biden Harris. Um, But I'm just, that's something that I never, and he said, I don't, he said, I would rather have you not be that versed. And because I want it to be, you know, I want us to learn together and stuff like that. It's been fascinating to me because I think a lot of times actors don't, or creatives don't want to talk about politics. So when you give people this opportunity, it's, it's been, and I've learned, you know, as I said, I can never look at another piece of plastic again without thinking of being yelled at by Kara Sedgwick, you know, because I uh, <laughs> did not get her going on plastics. Um, but it has, it's been, it's been fascinating and, and seeing people be kind of vulnerable mm-hmm. because they're discussing something that they don't usually talk about, you know, yes. and there is a fear of, uh, you know, want, don't you don't want to offend people. You don't want to, but yeah, well, it's been great. Especially in this count, uh, cancel culture, yes. I've noticed that so many of my friends who um, are on social media with any regularity are either, I find just two sorts, one, uh, me included, who just doesn't touch politics at all online, on their social media. Um, and the others who it's become, um, they're just so aggressive about it. I mean, it's, it's all they can talk about. And while I feel it as passionately as they do, I sometimes think, uh, what people decide to put out there, um, on, on either side or on either side of an issue, it's not just blue or red. I'm not talking about that at all. Um, it's too much for me personally. It's not what I go to social media for. Mm, I think there are times where it's so uniting on an issue or on, on something and it's wonderful, but I have a huge problem feeling like I'm being lectured to um, on social media. I don't like what I'm supposed to think, how I'm supposed to think. No one likes to feel lectured to. And I think, as I say all the time, the far 
left is as bad as the far right. Yeah. And I've always considered myself very much centrist. Um, but I, I think when I post something, I, A, it's my pet peeve. I say to people, please, I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Um, <laughs> I, sorry to disturb. I always say to people, I, I, it's just, it's a very difficult time. And I, uh, my pet peeve is when people do not vet the sources mm. that they're posting. Yeah. Especially today, we have to be so careful of that. And we have to really do our due diligence instead of hitting like, and then retweeting something, we have to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that's on both sides. One side seems to do it a little bit more than the other side, but we're not going to get into that. But I do, I feel, feel very strongly that right now uh, it's, we've been in an ugly time for uh, a while now. And I am a big believer in empathy and kindness. And so I just told you who I'm voting for. Uh, But (laughs) I, I, and look, uh, yeah. quite honestly, I was raised by I was raised by Republicans, and I me too. Not proudly, I voted. My first election was I mm-hmm. voted Republican, and I say this all the time. I would vote Republican if they presented somebody who had this. I, I'm a I'm a big believer in this country. I think this is an astounding country, and with all of its differences and all of its, but I uh, I. What I've seen the last few years has been so disturbing to me on so many yeah. different levels. Well, and, especially uh, for me, the, the it, and this is more issue oriented, you know, you can't be learning and improving and have perfection at the same time. You got to right. give people a chance to learn, absorb, talk to among each other, read, um, same before we can get this, this sort of like, talk about instant culture of social media and fads and whatever. I think it's bled into this, this political climate where, you know, if you aren't speaking our language and saying these things and posting these things, you're the complete opposite. It's like, can you give me a minute to even just take in the information before you expect what you classify perfection or, or, or you it. It comes down to if you even differ a little bit with somebody's yeah. opinion, and it's like no, 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 no. That's that's what that would that's what leads to conversation. Right. And in conversations, I, I have the the only thing that I will not converse about because I am I feel so strongly that it is our turn to listen is uh, Black Lives Matter. I in fact we were doing we are on a break right now from the podcast, but we were yes. doing the podcast during all of it. And uh, I said to Johnny, my, as a white person, I need to just listen right now. I don't need to comment. I don't need to, we all know my feelings as far as yes, black lives matter. That that's, that's not even a question. Yes. But I need to just listen. And I think a lot of people do instead of, I I think that makes you a better ally. I agree. In, 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 in any in any situation. And I think that that mm-hmm. is. Um, well, I think what's been challenging for a lot of people is the anger mm-hmm. coming and and allowing someone to, you know, it's very grown up to sit and let someone be angry mm-hmm. at you, even mm-hmm. though it's not at you. Right. L- allow that. But instead, this kind of like nod and yes. And oh, OK, wait what a minute. I'm doing right now. <laughs> It's like, a, you know, thank you for being very mature and very grown up. But yeah, you know, it's, I don't know. I was going to piggyback on that on too. And it's, I think that we have gotten to a point where um, be, because of everything you both just said, we need to kind of dial it back a little and be willing to allow people the safe space to admit they were wrong. Whichever side you are, whichever the topic is, it's like, 
people are so afraid to, to say like, you know what, I, I know now I know better. I'm going to do better because if they say you're right, I was wrong. It's like that cancel culture is already swept in to eliminate them. Right. Everybody bites their head off. It's like, we've got to give people a space to educate themselves, to kind of That's learn, right. and not just hear they said 25... buzzwords and respond to. And yeah. Exactly something they yeah. said 25 years ago, like you're totally. saying to know better, yeah. to do better. That has stopped being a thing that even if you said it 25 years ago, that has now followed you into today. Mm -hmm. I have to say some of the behaviors that I had as a 25 and 30 year old, which, which you both <laughs> have been privy to. I, I would not like have a, I have a list of things. <laughs> so I, yeah. Should we talk yeah, about this now? No, you ever no, see, thank you. you. But I would not want to be held to that. My list. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. Well, Wow. It's called <laughs> Mending Mondays. Wow. Wow. Feeling it. I'm feeling it. And You're taking welcome. it in. Thank you very much. Uh, so anyway, you're a part yes. of that list, so, though, through all of it. So. <laughs> wow. Now I'm really curious about this list. And I'm also a little flop sweaty over here. <laughs> it's like, wait, now I'm going back. I'm feeling shame all over again. No, and I don't know why. It. Stop it. No reason to be shamed. Um, yes. Okay. So I didn't mean to get, you know, so sidetracked into it. But again, you know, coming back to actually the work and doing what we do and the privilege when we get, I, I do, I want to be able to have the freedom to be a creative. And notoriously, I felt this during the, some of the post, and it's not even post me too, but, you know, sets are filthy places in a very good way. I don't know how else to say it. Um there is a liberation and safety, hopefully actors especially feel on a set. I try to do everything in my power to feel safe on a set so that I can let it rip, whether yeah. it's tears or, or jokes or whatever. I, I need to feel like you're all with me, all 80 of you, right. you know? Yeah. And, and if there's, um, if there isn't that, the work isn't going to be good. I mean, and we've seen it. So yeah. I'm, I'm so curious. My work? <laughs> Never. Um. Anyway, I'm excited to go back to work. Um. And I'm even with all the whatever's going to hit us. What's your What's your take on going back to work? I know you're going to go, um, start shooting something very soon, which is very yeah. exciting. Which we didn't talk about, and we can't. We can't because we're we are silenced by Tara's NDA. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, everyone will absolutely know this time in six months or whenever it comes out, but uh, cause everyone will see it um, and be awed by the talent that is Tara Carcian. <laughs> um, but how do you feel about going back on a set? I'm a little freaked out. And I have a friend who's uh, working right now and she called the other day and said, not going to lie to you. This is super creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. What's creepy about it? Just um, the fact that, that life as we know it is completely different now. And the fact that um, we as actors are used to them calling cut and makeup people coming and touching us up, that doesn't happen anymore. You know, walk over to a makeup table and do your own touch-ups. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, you don't, you grab your own props. Uh, the things that we are used to, um, right. it, it's a complete, it's a brand new world. Is it always going to be like this? No. Yeah. Uh, so there's part of me that's excited to see what it brings and how difficult it's going to be kind of, I mean, I don't know. How do you do scenes now? Um, uh, you know. Well, uh, at some point, I think like all of us, we're going to act, at least actor wise, we're going to have to take little leaps. Yeah. of faith and trust, which I, I do anyway. We all do. I mean, that, yeah, that, that's that is not new. How, why we're doing it is new, yeah. Yeah. but that's not new. I, I think once people start to get rolling, I do think this time next year, so much of this is not even going to be an issue. It's absolutely not. And I think yeah. it's going to be, I mean, I think it's just going to be, it, it'll be kind of interesting to me to see how it's done. But I'm also, I just, I think, I think it's going to be a good thing. And I also, I don't have any fear around getting sick or anything yeah. like that only because, you know, you're getting tested like every day you're getting, yeah. you know, you're, um, and the precautions, by the, the precautions. way, do you know anyone, do you know anyone who's gotten a cold in the last five months? I don't. No. 
We're not I know. touching it's our so, faces. We're it's washing so our ama- hands more. And the mask, I, I'm convinced, I well, maybe, you know, terminal optimist that I am, I'm convinced flu season and, and cold season is going to go very much by the wayside uh, this Let's hope. these yeah. next few months. Yeah. I hope. I hope because yeah. everyone's being so sanitary. And I got to tell you, I don't, I, I know this goes against, uh, I, I, I don't hate the masks. The mask, for yeah. whatever protection it is, it does make me feel safe. Yeah. yeah. And Agreed. I, I don't understand the difficulty in wearing one. I don't understand people who are behaving badly because they, they feel that it's either been politicized or that it's, yeah. no, it's just, it's, it's about being kind to one another. Yeah. And it takes so statement. little. Yeah. And a high and a hygienic hygienic issue. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I, in fact, am putting on a mask right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I I do want um, everyone who's listening to Mondays with Mindy to know uh, the actor Tara Carcian that I know, which is you know I just don't think given enough credit the way that um, our brethren in the past have been given credit is. I identify and I know Tara identifies as a journey person of sorts in that this is what we've done our whole lives. This is what we're going to do for the rest of our lives. And uh, the work is the work is the work is the work is the work. And um, you are one of my few friends who have had the longevity and the emotional wherewithal to weather the ups, the downs, the dry periods. And um, you've always... That's simply because I have no other talent. <laughs> you always say that, but that's so not true. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, outside looking in. But um, <laughs> the other thing is you share my sense of awe and wonder still at what we, we get to create. And and I love that about you. And will you give us like a five-minute master class on your self-talk to yourself in, in times when you sort of have to do that to yourself? Um, how you're able I, to live this life of an artist. Look, I, d- there have been people who said to me, well, you never stop working. And I go, oh, no, I do. And I'm well aware when I stop working. And I, I think that that gives you great, I think that's what makes going to work so wonderful is, you know, not being a, a, a look, I don't understand how any kid gets into this industry now and I'm talking kid like early 20s mm-hmm. it's a totally different industry but I think that there's a goes back to lack of gratitude I think it goes back to I have been there have been such dry times and I do believe this industry is cyclical uh, but there have been dry times that I go am I ever going to work again my I, I don't think my talent changes but something else does out in the world Mm -hmm. and I think as you start getting older and you start becoming more confident and more as I like to say I just I don't give a damn anymore but in the best way possible you know it's not it's not important to me that I get so many likes on Facebook or Instagram or the gram um see I put a the Instagram yeah the Instagram (laughs) The Instagram. Okay, Grandma, you got that? Okay. No, okay. I. but I think it's those times of uh, dry periods that makes me grateful for the mm-hmm. work and makes me go, God, I love this industry. And I do. I, 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 the day that stops, maybe it's time for me, but I still have the same tingly feeling walking onto a lawn. Yeah. I still have, I love... My favorite place is usually makeup and hair. You know, they're the yes. best. You, you just yeah. best place in the world. And I just, I love the the familial thing about the industry. And mm-hmm. I, there's so many amazing good people and just as many schmucks. Yeah, and <laughs> like any business, like any business. Yeah. And yeah. and hopefully, as you get older, you get better at discerning who's a mm-hmm. schmuck. And you get into a position where you can say, I don't choose to work with that person. I just yeah. pulled my ear out. Don't worry about that. me. I'm going to yeah, call well. Cedars. You talk amongst your Jesus. Um, <laughs> no, but I do. I, I think that it is what gives character actors, especially 
Yes. Uh, as my mother used to say, be grateful you're a character actor. You'll work more and more as you get older. And she was right. Yes, she and, was right. You know, and what a, what a what a gift. It's it's a gift to still be able to be working, you know? Yeah. yeah. I do know, and I feel the same way. It's we share a lot of that stuff. And you've also, you know, reminded me when I'm in the hole. Um, is this all there is? Of course not. And I do think the longer we've been in this business a very long time. Uh, you do understand that of course you'll get another job because I've been doing this for 40 years and what's it all of a sudden going to stop right now? You know, same with you. It's like, no, we, we, we know better cause we've lived it over and over and over again. Um, and I do have to say, uh, I am so excited to get back to work and the best is yet to come. I always feel that way. Yeah, um, and it is. Ba- ba- based on what we've experienced and been yeah. through. Um, and I do believe your mother and, and the great, uh, other actresses that have come, you know, with her and before her that have Mm -hmm. said the same thing. Um, thank you, Tara Carsey. And I, I kills me me not to be able to tell everybody what you're doing. Cause I, (laughs) I do just have to fell for a minute. You can cut this out if you want to Christian. I'm so excited for you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you have deserved this kind of job and many more that will follow for so long. And I'm so glad the world has finally agreed with me. I love being right. And I am so bloody excited for you and bravo. Bravo. Well, I, uh, thank you. And it's, and the best is yet to come for both of us, all three of us. That's right. And um, I, I just want to take a minute and thank you guys yeah. and tell you what a fabulous job you're doing on this podcast. Because I have to be honest with you, there are a lot of podcasts out there. You, I know. Uh, hence, you know, you hence, know exactly what I'm saying. Hence, hence, your podcast is our sponsor. That's how many are out there. <laughs> Jesus. But you guys are, you guys are, are truly wonderful Thank and you. welcoming and good at what you do. And, and it's been an honor and a pleasure. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Loved being had. <laughs> right. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, <laughs> our pleasure to have welcomed Tara onto the show. We encourage that you check her out. She is brilliant. She is funny. I think you got a little taste of that in this episode. Um, When this project is uh, able to be announced, we will put that in the show notes (laughs) on mondaysofmindy.com. We'll maybe even add a little something to the YouTube so people can uh, check it out. But I think you're going to, you're going to know without us having to tell you. So uh, um, once again, we thank you for joining us and we look forward to, uh, Talking to you again sometime soon. Ladies and gentlemen, Thanks, the Tara. very talented Tara Carcia. Thank you, guys. <laughs>